Hive of the Engine, Bluebell's Christmas Mission. It was Christmas Day in the top left-hand corner of Wales, and the hills and the valleys were thick with a white blanket of snow. Jones the Steam stamped snow from his boots at the door of the booking office of Laniog Station. Get the kettle on, die, he said. I'm frozen to the bone. No time for tea, Jones, said Dye Station. You've an urgent delivery. Mr. Pugh's Christmas parcel has arrived late, and he'll be wanting it as soon as possible. It's got his turkey in it, you see, and crackers, and a pudding too. For Mr. Pugh, Christmas won't be Christmas without it. Oh, I see, said Jones. Well, I wasn't expecting deliveries today. It's lucky if I were out of the shed then. Jones picked up the parcel and took it out and loaded it onto Ivor. Come on, Ivor, he said. Up to Mr. Pugh's farm we go. If he doesn't get his turkey in the oven soon, it won't be ready for Christmas dinner. Blue Ivor's whistle. And off they went, chuckling along the line towards Mr. Pugh's farm. They passed Mrs. Porty's house and the coal pit down from Dinwiddie's gold mine, and they were just going over Pennybont Bridge when Ivor's whistle let out a... And he hissed to a halt. What's the matter, Ivor? said Jones. Jones jumped down from Ivor's cabin to see what the trouble was. A mountain of snow lay across the line. Ooh, hummed Jones. All that snow must have slid down the hill during the night. Oh, well, we're not going to get through that lot in a hurry. Best go back and tell Di. At Laniog Station, Jones told Di about the mountain of snow, and Di telephoned Mr. Pugh with the bad news. So you see, Ivor can't get through, Mr. Pugh. Perhaps you could eat one of your chickens instead. There was a long silence while Di listened to Mr. Pugh's reply. Then Di said, Well, I see, Mr. Pugh, and a very Merry Christmas to you, too. And he put down the telephone. What did he say, Di? Jones asked. Well, he said he didn't want to eat one of his chickens because it's Christmas, and you don't eat chickens at Christmas. And he said he doesn't want to eat his chickens anyway because he's very fond of his chickens. He wants turkey and crackers and pudding. And that's what he said. Oh, well, said Jones. There's nothing for it. I'll have to get the snowplough fixed onto Ivor, I suppose. <coughs> Jones and Ivor chuffed back to Ivor's shed, and Jones trudged through the snow to another shed around the back where he kept the plough. The shed was buried up to its little window in its own small mountain of snow. Oh, no, exclaimed Jones. I need a snowplough to get to my own snowplough. It'll take me ages to clear all this away. By the time I've finished, it'll be way past Christmas dinner time, let alone time to put the turkey in the oven. <coughs> Went Ivor's whistle. Jones trudged over to Ivor. What's that, Ivor? He said. Have you an idea? <coughs> Went Ivor. <laughs> well, all right then. If you think you have an idea, you better show me, said Jones. They climbed into Ivor's cabin and away they chuffed, back down the line. They went past Laniog Station and carried on to Mrs. Porty's. Then Ivor slowed to a halt, right outside the gates of Mrs. Porty's house. Mr. Jones! exclaimed Mrs. Porty, coming out of the front door and waving. What a lovely surprise! And Merry Christmas to you both! What are you doing up here on Christmas Day? Well, that's a very good question, laughed Jones. I have a turkey for Mr. Pugh, but the line's blocked with snow, you see. Uh, so we can't get through to Mr. Pugh's farm, and, and Ivor's brought me here, to you, Mrs. Porty. 
To be honest, I don't know why. Mrs. Porty frowned and shook her head. Well, it does seem odd to me, she said. It's not as if I could carry the turkey through to Mr. Pew myself, or unless... Mrs. Porty turned around and looked across her garden to the field where Bluebell the donkey lived. Bluebell was just coming out of her little house to see what all the fuss was about. went Ivor's whistle. "'Ah,' said Jones. "'Yes, I see, Ivor. "'Mrs. Porty, can we borrow Bluebell for an urgent mission?' "'Well, of course,' laughed Mrs. Porty. "'You don't mind going with Jones and Ivor, do you, Bluebell?' she called to her donkey. Bluebell raised her head and let out a joyful, <laughs> So off went Ivor, Jones and Bluebell. Ivor chuffed, chuffed, chuffed all the way round to where the line was blocked with snow. Jones divided Mr. Pugh's package of Christmas goodies into two smaller packages and then, using some rope and a coal bag, he carefully tied it onto Bluebell's sides. There you are, my dear, said Jones. You know what to do. Get this lot over to Pugh's and we'll come and collect you as soon as we can. Jones and Ivor watched Bluebell make her way across the snow. They watched her until she had disappeared amongst the trees. Oh, I do hope she'll be all right, Ivor, said Jones. Whistled Ivor. Jones smiled. Yes, of course she will. She's a clever little donkey. Then Jones got on board and Ivor chuffed back down to Tlaniog Station. Come on, Di, said Jones, pushing open the door to the ticket office. We've got some snow that needs shifting. Shifting snow, is it? said Di. I don't know about that. I've I've just made myself a nice cup of tea. Oh, come along now, Di, said Jones. You should be kind and help me clear the snow. It is Christmas after all. Well, exactly, said Di. It's Christmas. I don't want to go about shifting snow on such a special occasion. But eventually Di agreed to help Jones. Di put on his boots and they went over to Ivor's shed. Together they dug away the snow until they managed to get this little shed door open and they could pull out the snowplow. Then they made a fresh pot of tea from Ivor's boiler and ate the only things they could find on the shelf in Ivor's shed, custard cream biscuits. Merry Christmas, Jones, said Di. Merry Christmas, Di, said Jones. They knocked their mugs together with a clank. Went Ivor. And a very Merry Christmas to you, Ivor, said both Jones and Di. When they had finished their tea and biscuits, they carefully attached the snowplow to Ivor, then set off up the line. Are you going to come with us, Di? said Jones. Well, I might as well, said Di. I'm sure things will be quite quiet back at the station, seeing as it's uh, Christmas Day and all. What about the regulations? asked Jones. Oh, regulations we'll just have to keep till tomorrow. With his snowplow in place, Ivor sliced through the snow like a knife through butter. He let out a triumphant as they arrived at Mr. Pugh's farm and hissed to a halt just as Mr. Pugh appeared at the front door. Ivor! Mr. Jones! Oh, and Dice Station, too! It's a rare treat to see you out and about, exclaimed Mr. Pugh. Did Bluebell deliver your Christmas goods? asked Jones. Indeed she did, grinned Mr. Pugh. Indeed she did. You've got a good one there. The turkey is cooked, the crackers are on the table, and the pudding is on the stove. And now, if you will, it would be my pleasure if you would join us for Christmas dinner. Well, I'll tell you, that would be wonderful, Mr. Pugh, said Jones. All Di and I have had to eat all day a custard cream biscuits. And so just as it was getting dark, Jones and Di joined Mr. Pugh and his family for a delicious Christmas dinner. A 
A basket of biscuits and warm bread were put down by the fireplace for Bluebell to eat. She picked up the basket in her teeth, carried it out the front door, and went over to the railway line to eat the biscuits and warm bread next to her friend, Ivor. And together they watched the sun go down over the snowy hills on Christmas Day in the top left-hand corner of Wales. <laughs> 